Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? With Alex Pereira's and keep him. I. So while his star was no longer as revered, there was a poetan shaped gap to fill. Enter Alex Pereira. There were whispers of the man responsible for Izzy's singular L on his record, and the hype started to grow when he eventually signed to the UFC, and he quickly became a meme for being Izzy's personal boogeyman and it follows demon, and chasing every achievement Izzy made and one-upping him at every turn. Pereira then goes and beats the only other guy to beat Adesanya in Jan Blachowicz. Pereira then trains with Sean Strickland, who he had already beaten, just to help Strickland beat Adesanya, which of course he did. Izzy goes on to train Logan Paul, so of course Pereira trains Dylan Danis. Izzy posts this about boxing, Pereira then posts this about boxing. If Izzy decided on a career change to become an airline pilot, you would find Pereira in the cockpit with more captain stripes quicker than you can say Chama. I am truly in awe of Pereira's dedication to just being the most dedicated arch villain nemesis of all time. People are attracted to his unexpected personality, whereas he may look like a stone cold killer on day release from Guantanamo Bay, he really is a big teddy bear with a heart of gold. And due to his seeming inability to emote, his meme worthy persona grew, and he was often compared with Easter Island's head statues. And when he leaned into the lols and embraced it, it raised his likability meter even more. So when he does treat us to the rare smile, especially after his pranking of Glover Teixeira, it's tremendously fulfilling. His face morphs into a different one altogether, from psychopath to Mormon. Alex has had a somewhat turbulent journey to get to this point, and like most fighters, the story begins with poverty and anguish, struggling with an alcohol abuse problem and working at a tyre shop which Reddit Stalker Brothers confirmed via Google Maps, good lord. Of course there's nothing wrong with honest work, but to see a man going from breaking the wheels off Fiat Stradas to breaking the wheels off New Zealand's finest is quite the admirable journey, and his humble reminiscence of said journey is endearing to say the least. He's a family man and has a great relationship with his children, although he did nearly leave his mini-me drinking out of a straw for life after the lad chanced the jump scare at the friendly neighbourhood Freddy Krueger. This would juxtapose with Adesanya's relationship with children where he can be found holding grudges against a kid that mocked him and going on to mock the child back. You simply have to respect Alex Pereira, going from being knocked out cold in April to beating former champion Jan Blachowicz in July at altitude and going on now to beat Yuri Prohaska in the light heavyweight division to become the new light heavy champ of the world. This was the second biggest pay-per-view at MSG, which of course some of that may be attributed to the fact that it was supposed to be Jones vs Miocic headlining the fight, but the fact that hardly anyone requested refunds tells you that it wouldn't necessarily be much different regardless, and Pereira also shares the third spot with Adesanya as well. But him being above Adesanya in the pay-per-view really lends to the one up in everything Izzy does law. With a turnout of so many stars, Donald Trump and Dana walking out like the mobbed up at a commission meeting. Bill Burr's wife flipped off Trump. Burby watching this clip back more embarrassed than Ariel was when he accidentally got a peek of Dustin Poirier's hot sauce on his camera roll. Oh, not that one. I saw so many fan posters in the lead up to this fight alluding to the battle of the samurai versus the poetan. I was so hyped. I started to think the UFC had fumbled the promo for this event with the vanilla ice cream missionary unseasoned chicken posters. I just got so caught up in the hype I don't know what I was expecting, some sort of deadliest warrior shit going down. I mean, Pereira with his love of archery and cosplay, brother looks like he's more than ready to chase down Indiana Jones for that Easter Island skull artifact. When the fight started, I was given the frostiest chills I ever received, bruv. I can't lie, that stare down was utterly splendid. Pereira's stone cold serial killer persona came out in full swing, and Yuri mirrored that with the energy of his own borderline spectrum residing samurai alter ego. This was the coldest pairing since Beans on Toast, man, and birthed one of the coolest moments in UFC history for me, up there with Robbie Lawler versus Rory McDonald. This had the energy of two serial killers on day release fighting with a pool cue over joining the Joker's gang. Red has had that menace in the rise that only comes after a recent blood-boiling tragedy, 
like they just got finished with season 8 of Game of Thrones. It just goes to show that you don't have to force cringy lines and fake beef at press conferences to be a star. Pereira manages to exude so much charisma, despite not being able to speak English and without manufacturing some faux narrative, unlike some. Pereira went on to address Israel's comments about Pereira being in a bar, talking about Izzy, and how that actually motivated him. And now he wants to do the same for Israel. It was actually a very respectful and generous call out. Despite him saying come to daddy, but he needed that for the future grudge match marketing promos. So naturally, when Joe Rogan decided to piss right in Pereira's cornflakes and ruin the call out, it was a bit disappointing really. You're talking about Israel Adesanya to come to light heavyweight. Now, Jamal Hill is here. He will be next for you. Give us your thoughts on that. In just 11 fights, Alex Pereira has joined the 2-8 champion club and has cemented himself with a very impressive legacy and will potentially one day join the Hall of Fame. Now, there have been discussions about the grandiosity of that legacy, some people saying he has surpassed Khabib's already, but we have to realise that there's a huge recency bias in this sport and fans love to constantly have new contenders for the GOAT in the discussion. Unfortunately to say that the reality is that if Pereira gets matched with a grappler that has the ability to check those monstrous calf kicks, I believe he could be made to look like a little bit of a silly goose indeed. However, it is no doubt that there, he is now a bona fide star in the sport, and with Izzy taking a few years off now, you can be sure the Poetan's star will eclipse that of Adesanya's, especially if you learn just a crumb of English to make hilarious statements like Khabib's unintentionally hilarious quotes. This is number one bullshit. Though Dana White will be shaking his cup at Izzy in an attempt to deter him from his long vacation and fight Pereira again, I'm certain of that. This rivalry with Israel Adesanya is one of the most intense rivalries with the most cannon behind it. Though Alex is 3-1 so far, do you think Izzy beats him again or wins the war? Or is he doomed to follow Daniel Cormier's footsteps as always being second best while their personal boogeyman exists? The entry of Pereira to the UFC has shaken up the middleweight division which was desperately in need of it, and the rivalry between these two has opened up a new enjoyable narrative to the sport. And it is a nuanced rivalry, I just feel like one day OAP, Adesanya and Pereira will be sat on rocking chairs with a cigar enjoying a whiskey and reminiscing over their long past beef. If not, Pereira will live rent free in Izzy's mind for the rest of time. Does Pereira beat Jamal Hill at light heavyweight? Let me know what you think. In the meantime, Pereira has one of the biggest fan bases in the sport right now, and due to his gain in the upper hand in this war of attrition, it's easy to see how Alex Pereira has stolen Izzy's star power. Calf kick the sub button pimps. Cheers.